As you heard, the title is Our Unique Talents. And I have recently just written about this in the editorial. I'll kind of go into that, but I'm not going to be focusing on, on that aspect anyway. But each and every one of us is unique in some way. Each of us differ from one another by certain things that we can do, special skills that we may have. And we, we refer to them as our talents. There are certain things that we are good at, and we put these special talents to use, or at least we should. Our special talents can make us very successful, as you will see in a moment. Now, we have them for a reason, and these skills of ours can be anything, such as academic skills, musical, athletic, communication, technological, driving. You may have a talent to sleep. Oh, whatever it can be. But we may have one good talent, and we may have many talents. And like I already said, we have these talents for a reason. We all have different talents, and 1 Corinthians 7, verse 7 tells us that each of us has his own gift, and that gift comes from God. Now, there may be one or a few particular things that we are good at, but have you ever wondered why or what the purpose is. Now, I have asked this question many times, and I sometimes still do. Is it something I want to do? And most importantly, is it something God wants me to do? And a lot of times it's difficult to tell. But we won't know this until we try it. Sure, there could be several things that we try just to see if it's going to work out for us. And there's many things I have tried in my life, and then I thought, ah, maybe I don't want to do that, or I bring it to further use. Some things, of course, are clear that we shouldn't do it since it would interfere with God's law. And that one is a big challenge because you may have a specific talent that you want to use, but is it really benefiting when it comes to God's way? With certain talents that we have, there could very well be a purpose, especially for us in the church. Do we possess talents that benefit the church by doing the work of God in ways that we can better spread the gospel to the world? And that is a goal that we all have in mind. But even though we all differ in our responsibilities and how we spread the gospel to the world. Now, even the purpose as to why we have the jobs we have, even if we think that it doesn't even necessarily benefit the church where we are earning money, and just by that alone, though, we do help the church when it comes to tithes and offerings, but it also teaches us responsibilities producing patience by starting somewhere and then ultimately getting to where we want. We may have a job where we could do it for many, many years, thinking to ourselves, what does this have to do with, you know, the church, right? But there are several ways we learn from them. Never forget that God is always in the picture, guiding and directing our lives and all that we do and anything that we do in this physical life of ours is only temporary anyway, but... Everything we do is for a much bigger purpose in the future. Now, again, I wrote about the parable of talents in my recent editorial explaining what Jesus was describing in Matthew 25, how we are to use our talents pleasing to God and that we should or, that, or we are not to use it in an irresponsible way. But there are many examples in the Bible of individuals who had special talents given by God for a special purpose. First individual I'd like to talk about is Daniel. And he had a special talent that was given by God, as we read about in Daniel chapter 1. And verse 17. Now, there's nothing new about these examples I'm going to be speaking about today. We oftentimes refer to them. But there's also a reason why we do that. In Daniel chapter 1, and verse 17, oops. 
As for these young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Why is that? It's because God gave that talent to him. Now at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Now Daniel had a special talent given to God, which he obviously was going to use for a purpose. The king Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, which troubled him, but nobody could explain these dreams. And he sought out to kill all the wise men of the city. As we see in chapter 2, verse 19, we read, Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. And what did Daniel do? He blessed the God of heaven, because he knew that this gift came from God. And then Daniel explained the dream to the king, and as a result, Daniel was promoted in verse 48. Now, no doubt that Daniel had a lot of power at this point, realizing what kind of a special skill and a talent that he had. But he also knew it was all God's doing. And Daniel praised God continually with a prayer. And in chapter 6, we see that no matter what, Daniel always had his faith and trust in God. Chapter 6, verse 10 of Daniel We read, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. This didn't stop just because he had his talent of his, which is obviously helping him in his life. That didn't stop him from continuously thanking God by praying to him. And then as we know, we, as we keep reading in this chapter, what happens because of the decree that the king had put out and because Daniel was praying to the God which was against what the law was. So what happened in verse 18, the king went to his uh, palace and spent the night fasting and no musicians were brought before him. Because obviously then, you know, the uh, sin of this whatever, or the uh, punishment would be that he would be thrown into the uh, lion's den. What could the king do? That was his law, but he had to go by it. But now he also had the faith that Daniel's God would save him. So the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him, and also his sleep went from him. The king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. When he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel said to the king, verse 21, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. This, of course, made the king very happy. But again, Daniel's response, you know, wasn't saying like, oh, because of him and, and Daniel's glory. No, all his glory was to God and knew that God would save him putting his uh, trust and faith in God through the talent that God gave him. Now, somebody else who had a very similar talent was Joseph. He had the same unique gift where he was able to explain Pharaoh's dreams, realizing, again, that the gift came from God. And as a result, from a slave to second in command over all of Egypt. And he, too, praised God for his special gift. Now, another individual we constantly refer to had a special talent as well, was David. Now, he had many talents, but one in particular in the very beginning was his skill on the harp, which was admired by King Saul when a distressing spirit troubled him. And David would play to calm him, as we see in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and in verse 16. Any musicians out there? have a talent with music. I mean, we know how much music is, we read about a lot in the Bible, you know, how that is, especially during the feast. 
how it does benefit and how soothing, how nice that is. But here, in this purpose, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 16, let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp, and it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be well. Verse 21, So David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his arm bearer, armor bearer. And verse 23, And it was so, or so it was, whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. And Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Now, since David was a musician, he wrote many songs throughout his life, and we read about them in the Bible, referred to as the book of Psalms. And just as Daniel did, David also praised the Lord. See, with one of these talents that he had, brought in other talents. And since it was a gift from God, he used that, acknowledged that, and he kept going with what he needed to be doing. Now, another special talent was Samson, who had, his talent was his strength. And that was clearly given by God. The problem was, in this example, he wasn't quite using his strength in the way God really actually wanted him to, as he was abusing that talent. And so many times that we have a talent, we may not be using it in the way we should, We'll be tested with it. Now, Samson was definitely tested, but he came to realize that, and it took his whole life to come to the repentance that he needed to do, because before he repented from his selfish ambitions, he had taken God's gift for granted and didn't glorify God, and then as a result, had to suffer the consequences. But at the very end of his life, he realized that, and he barely repented for it, and he asked it to get his strength back for a particular purpose which God then granted. So even though we may have talents that we're not using to God's benefit, which we have to learn from, that is where we really need to have the trust and faith and ask for God's help in that so we can use it in a responsible way. Now each one of these individuals had their own specific gift. From God and they all thanked God for it. Their specific talents fulfilled God's purpose, but God also wanted to make sure that the gifts that they had came from him. And we all have many different kinds of talents, but we all share the same gift, and it is very important that we continue to use that gift. Notice 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14. First Timothy 4, verse 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at our baptism. And the Holy Spirit is something that helps us, that will keep us alive that will keep us refreshed, that will keep us energized. But we have to keep praying for that, that we don't lose it either. And there's going to be times in our life where we're going to struggle, and that's where we definitely need to pray to God, where we need to have the Holy Spirit strengthen us. Now, sometimes it can be very easy to neglect the gift that we have when we go through phases of sadness and lack of motivation and zeal. That's normal. And that is why we need to change that way of thinking by praying to God and asking for strength to keep going, to keep on fighting, keep focusing on what our ultimate goal is. Don't let our human emotions get the better of us. The knowledge of the kingdom of God, God's law, and what our potential is, is to be God beings and to have everlasting life. And that right there is the greatest gift which many people know nothing about. And it is something that we should not take for granted. Because it is God and only God 
that has opened our minds to, to his way of life. All we have to do is use the gifts that he has given us, as he says in Romans chapter 12, verse 6. And through faith and through the gift that God has given us, we have been saved. Ephesians chapter 2 sums up what I am referring to, which I like to read. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, that is Satan the devil, who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, for we accepted his sacrifice. Verse 6, raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. We have to continuously live in faith, being obedient. Verse 9, not of works, lest any which should boast, for we are, verse 10, his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. As we were obtained beforehand, as we were called out from the very beginning, we were predestined, God saw what our future would be. The plans that he has for us, the gifts that he has given us. So we need to continue to use God's gifts and remember what it says in James 1.17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. 